So welcome back. This is part two of session five and we're going to finish off the last two multiple choice questions. And again, uh, these questions come from Reagan and Lipsy uh, directly from their website. And you can take a look at part one. It'll give you the address of where you can go and you can, you can try out those questions, uh, input your answers and it'll give you uh, feedback as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, first one. And that's saying if the income elasticity of good A is negative, Okay, and take a look here, it's talking about a price fall. Price fall, price fall. All the answers are talking about a price fall. Okay, so if, if we talk about the income elasticity of an item, if the price uh, decreases of an item, okay, what it's going to do is it's going to increase that person's real income. Alright, so let me explain what I mean by that. So you're familiar with what we call your nominal income. Your nominal income is the amount that gets deposited into your uh, account or what's on your paycheck, your pay stub. That's your nominal income. And that's measured in the currency of your country. So for example, it'll be measured in dollars. Now, your nominal income doesn't change when there's major changes in prices. So for example, if, if prices basically were cut in half, your nominal income wouldn't change. But if prices fell, your real income would change. Your real income is measured in what your money can buy you. So if the prices out there in the economy are all cut in half, the money that you have can now buy more. And that's the same way as saying that your real income has gone up in this case here. So if the price falls, your real income is going to go up. Now if your real income is going to go up and you buy more, that's an increase in quantity demanded, you would know that to be a normal good. All right, so, and most goods are a normal good. That means as you, if your income goes up and you buy more of an item, that's, that's what we call a normal good. Most, most goods are normal goods. Now again, if the price falls, and again, that's going to increase your real income, right? But because your income, your real income is higher, you actually buy less of a particular item. We call that an inferior good. Okay, and take a look at the relationship. We have an increase in real income and an increase in quantity demand. That's a positive relationship. All right, so that's a positive, that's a positive relationship. Whereas, take a look at the, another item. If the income, real income goes up, and you buy less of that item, well, in this case here, you, that would be a negative relationship, and that's what we're looking at here. So, the income elasticity of a good is negative. They're really talking about an inferior good. So, this is an inferior good. So when we talk about income elasticity of good A being negative, we're really talking about inferior goods. So let's look at the um, uh, answers here. The first one is talking about the price effect of a price fall. Well, your your book and, and most books talk about the substitution effect and the income effect. They're not talking about any price effect, so we can just eliminate that. That looks like a to throw us off trail, that answer there. Um, the next one is the income effect of a price fall is to decrease the quantity consumed of the good whose price fell. Now this one sounds good. This one sounds like if the income effect of a price fall is to decrease, so if the price falls, and because your real income goes up, you you buy less of this item, right? So you decrease the quantity consumed. This one sounds like, for this answer here, this one sounds like the inferior good. So this one looks like our answer here. Let's go through the other ones. Um, now this one's looking at uh, income elasticity of, of good A is negative. They're telling us that this is an inferior good. But whether it's an inferior good or a uh, normal good, the substitution effect is the same. And the substitution effect is, is what we talk about when we talk about the law of demand. That is, if you lower the price, holding everything else equal, the quantity demand of that good goes up. All right, so C is saying the substitution effect of a price fall is to in decrease the quantity consumed of the good whose price fell. Well, that's not true. That's not what happens with the substitution effect. The substitution effect is always a negative relationship. That is, if the price falls, people buy more, which is an increase in quantity demanded. And so the substitution effect for both an inferior good and the substitution effect for a normal good is the same. It's a negative relationship based on the law of demand. Uh, D, the substitution effect of a price fall is null. Well, there is going to be a substitution effect. Okay, and it's not going to be null, so we can get rid of that one. The income effect of a price fall is to increase the quantity consumed uh, of a good whose price fell. So if, if the price falls, which increases your real income, and then you buy more, 
this is what we would call a normal good. So this is what we would call the normal good here, and we can cross that off as well. Let's look at our last question. Okay, last question is looking at consumer surplus. So let's get our definition of consumer surplus. Let's draw it out. Okay, and you can take a look at your book if you're interested and you want to see uh, consumer surplus. So here's our demand curve. So let's draw our demand curve here, and let's draw our supply curve here. And we'll draw equilibrium, and with it, the market price. And let's just say the market price for this particular item is $5. Now, in terms of consumer surplus, consumer surplus is going to be this particular area here. Let me just fill that all in there for you, best I can. So take a look. The consumer surplus is the area above the market price and below the demand curve. All right, so take a look here, above the market price of $5 and below this demand curve, this whole green area here, okay, this whole green area here is consumer surplus. So this whole area, we can call that consumer surplus. Now this, what I just showed you is consumer surplus on all the items consumed. What about the consumer surplus on a particular one. Let's let's take a look here. Let's say for the second one, the second unit consumed, what's the consumer surplus on this second unit? So here's the second unit that you consumed and what's the consumer surplus? Where, where that second unit hits the demand curve, and again I'll just, I'm making up numbers here. So where it hits it, let's just say that uh, this is uh, $8. Okay, so this is $8. So what's the consumer surplus on the second unit? So the green area is the consumer surplus on the whole thing what's the consumer surplus on just that second unit? Okay, so let's take a look here. So the consumer surplus okay, on the second unit. How we would find it is we would take your maximum willingness to pay and your maximum willingness to pay comes from the demand curve. So take a look here, you'll see where that second uh, unit, so consuming the second unit, where it hits the demand curve here is going to spit out uh, our maximum willingness to pay. And again, we just made up this number. It looks approximately around eight dollars. All right, so this this is the eight dollars minus the market price. So your maximum willingness to pay minus the market price will give you the consumer surplus. So the second unit gave a consumer surplus of three dollars. Now. You don't really think in terms of consumer surplus when you buy items, but there may have been some times where you went to buy something that perhaps you didn't know that much about and you probably had some idea about what you were willing to pay and when you got there you noticed, hey, this is a lot less than what I expected and you're pretty happy. You say, this is a pretty good deal. I got myself a good deal. So whenever you talk to your friends, hey, I got a super deal, that's that's your idea of what consumer surplus. You perhaps were willing and maybe prepared to pay more but the market price was less than what you were willing, uh, uh, market price was less than your sort of what we call maximum willingness to pay, and that consumer surplus is that sort of bonus to you. All right, so that's what we're looking at in this uh, particular session, and stay tuned for the next session, which is looking at uh, the costs in the short run.